guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Today we're going to talk about, well, exactly what the title says. Wow. And we're gonna talk about 10 champions that I personally invested and I personally maxed out. And boy, you never do know, do you? You never know when you build a champion in this game, how much damage are they really gonna be putting out, right? You watch a YouTube guide, oh, they had him in, you know, 400 crit damage. Of course, they're gonna be putting out a lot of damage, right? Or they have them in God tier artifacts. Or even if you look at the multiplier, sometimes you build the champion and you're surprised at how little or how much damage they do, even despite knowing the multipliers on these champions. So today I'm going to share 10 champions that I invested in, I maxed out, and I was really pleasantly surprised with the amount of damage they were able to put out. Now, if you want me to do the inverse of this video, because I'll tell you what, guys, there were plenty of champions that I've invested in <clears throat> uh, that... What? Why? Why? Did the inverse again that did no damage or way less damage than I was expecting. So today's list will include uh, legendary champions, epic champions, even a rare champion on today's list. So let me know if I call out one of your favorite champions that you've been impressed with their damage output as well. And let me know who I snub. So let's start out with <laughs> Basilisk, dude. We mentioned this in the Hell Hades collab uh, last week, but my God, I had no idea before I built him how much is AoE on his A1 deals? It's an AoE on his A1 that deals a tremendous amount of damage. Like, it is a legit A2, A3 caliber nuke, and he's just a great nuker. Not just for Lizardmen, you know, faction wars, even shutting off the Skull Clover ability if you don't want that stun. Nice to have that single target stun. But man, he has this passive where he revives himself with a block damage. Can be annoying to go against. But you can just use him, just AoE, 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 A1 every single time. And it'll be a really good kind of dungeon clearer champion. Or even if you want to go outside the box, using you get uh, in the arena, excuse me, against an all like magic affinity team, he could be annoying with that passive. And all you need, again, is that A1 every single time it's his turn. He's a very, very underrated champion, in my opinion. All right, next up is going to be Tuak the Wanderer. Ah, uh, who are the Amazon Prime free champions? Any of you guys been playing that long? There was Vala, there was Whisper, Ultimate Galek, I believe, and Tuak the Wanderer. Let me tell you, Tuak the Wanderer was the most underrated out of all four of those champions. He's one of the more underrated damage dealers in the game. Truly mean that. I think that this guy and... Uh, what is his name? Jizkar the Gazild? Giz, Giz, eh. Jay Quellen. No Jay Quellen here? Uh, do you mean Jacqueline? Balake. My name's Blake. D nice. Is there a D nice? Do you mean Denise? So no. <laughs> Those are the two almost underrated epic champions, in my opinion Tuak and Jizkard. So anyway, uh, Tuak is cool. I have him in a frenzy set, guys. If you have Tuak, if you play Tuak, you know, man, this guy's a beast. Vouch for me in the comments. Uh, <laughs> he gets better when his HP is below 50%. That's why I put the frenzy set on him because I wasn't using the frenzy gear anyway, right? On the A2, though, it's a hard-hitting three-turn cooldown ability with decreased speed. Also has increased speed on himself and a heal if he's below 50% HP. He also can steal 100% turn meter on his A3, cr uh, Clever Brutality, which also deals a ton of damage on the A3. So this guy, man, he's my damage carry in Orc Faction Wars, even over, what's his face here, Robar. Where are you, Robar? Robar, a legacy champion that everybody told me, oh, this guy, the A3, it's gonna be insane multipliers, he's amazing. He's also a debuffer to his credit, but yeah, man, Tuak deals way more damage than Robar, right? And Robar, by the way, is in really good gear. He's got double cruel, he's got, what, probably over 200, yeah, over 200 crit damage, and Tuak still, is dealing like at least 33% 33, 33 more damage. So big, big fan of Tuak the Wanderer. Definitely invest uh, if you're looking for a solid nuker with decreased speed on the three turn cooldown on an AoE as well. Next up is going to be, I'm trying to buy some time while I look for this guy. Here he is, Geomancer. Man, if any of you guys are out there, if anybody's out there that has Geomancer, that have not maxed him out, that have not invested in him, what are you waiting for? Seriously, this guy is a damage dealer and a half, man. He's dealing damage everywhere, even damage on his passive. Decrease the damage all allies receive by 15% and deflects that damage onto the enemy under HP burn debuff placed by this champion. Whenever he's attacked, he's deflecting 30% of the damage instead. He has an AoE on his A1. Nice to have again. 
Uh, on the A2, he's stealing buffs or removing buffs, uh, depending on the AF HP burn. If he's killing somebody, he's reducing the cooldown of the A3 Quicksand Grasp, uh, which Chris, Quicksand Grasp, excuse me, fully depletes uh, the target's turn meter, fills his champion's turn meter by the amount the target loses, and then places an HP burn for three turns with Weaken. Let me tell you guys, between the passive and just the AoE on the A1 and the HP burn like all the time, this guy is just insane in terms of damage. I haven't seen a bigger damage dealer in terms of against bosses in particular uh, in a while, in a while. He's, he's a special champion. Magnar is another new champion who is an arena nuker. We, we, there's a lot of videos out there kind of comparing him to Trunda. I put out a video as well uh, talking about him as an upper echelon arena nuker. I'll include that in the links below. But really, all you need to know is, first of all, I don't buy into the comparison. They're so different, these champions, except for they have a hard-hitting AoE attack, right? Uh, his damage is based on HP. This, this A2 can hit super hard. You're seeing him use in platinum tier arena. There has not been an epic nuker added to the game who's as strong as Magnar in forever? <laughs> I don't know, you guys let me know if there's a better one out there, but I can't think of one. He also has a debuff spread, a hard hitting A3. He's just a very, very big multiplier, uh, epic champion. Uh, Spirit Affinity too, nice to have a great nuker against all those annoying force affinity teams that are cropping up in the arena. So very, very big damage dealer, huge fan of this champion. Now this one guys, man. <laughs>I'm not saying it just cause he's me, okay? It's Ash Walker. I built him out, I built him just for the memes, man. Just so I could say, Plurium made me into a champion, guys, ha ha ha. But I was really impressed with the damage he puts out. Now he's not an end game nuker, but he's certainly a mid game nuker. He's certainly a better nuker than a lot of rare champions out there in the game. Uh, the Great Hammer uh, resets the cooldown of his A2 if it kills an enemy and it has great multipliers on it. His A2 attacks one enemy with a stun or decreased turn meter of all enemies if the attack is critical. And then this Backbreaker ability. It's a three turn cooldown and it's a hard hitting ability. Again, especially for a rare, albeit a void rare champion, guys. I was very impressed. And I'll tell you what, in gold four, just farming metals, I'm starting to see a lot of teams using Ashwalker in gold four i saw a couple teams just this morning with ash walker so i was really legitimately impressed i'm not just saying that because it's my name in ash walker he can be a very valid damage dealer especially in the arena if you're looking for kind of an upgrade to like a kale type a starting champion uh okay next up is going to be Vizix the unboat uh, man Vizix after she got her buff these AoE attacks here, it's an AoE attack with a provoke, an AoE attack with a decreased speed, and those AoEs deal a decent amount of damage, but having two of them really adds up. Having two of them on a three turn cooldown means she's essentially going from her A1 to an AoE to an AoE to her A1. An AoE, an AoE to the A1, right? And this damage based on defense, so she's easy to keep alive while you're landing debuffs, while you're ally protecting, and while you're dealing a surprising amount of damage. I have two physics built, no big deal. Uh, I had a fun uh, double physics, double Sill of the Drakes video. If you guys want to check that out, I'll try to remember to put it in the description below. But yeah, I mean, physics after her buff, I was surprised. She's not your main damage carry on a team. I was just surprised by how much damage she put out, you know? Uh, same thing with Coronar. Really uh, impressed with Coronar, right? Because I, I pulled Coronar and I wasn't super excited about it. Because at the time, I was already end game, end game, and I'm like, okay, am I gonna use this guy? And let me tell you, man, he is really sneaky strong. He's sneaky strong, and he's more in my estimation than just uh, you know a silly niche champion. He has an AoE attack with the inc with the decrease attack, excuse me, uh, potentially decreased defense as well on his on a four turn cooldown. It's not a super hard hitting ability, but all of his damage is going to really slowly and sneakily add up, right? On his A two, he has a provoke on, on on all enemies. He's not doing any damage though, okay? On his A1 though, look at the synergy between this Ferocious Guard and the A1. Counterattacks, this is his passive. Counterattacks when hit by enemies under decreased attack, decreased defense, decreased speed, which he's bringing to the table again, decreased uh, defense and attack on his A4, right? So he's gonna counterattack every single time he's hit. 
On his A1, it's an AoE attack with turn meter reduction. Again, this A1 is not dealing a ton of damage. It's no Basilisk A1, right? It's no Geomancer A1. However, with the turn meter and attacking all enemies two times instead, if Manaya is on the same team, which is pretty cool, uh, but just attacking all enemies one time on his A1, I am shocked at how much damage he puts out because he's constantly counterattacking on an AoE all the time, right? As long as you have a decreased speed champion on the same team, you should, or another decreased attack, decreased defense champion, he's just gonna be dishing out just tons of damage. Even if he's doing, you know, seven to, to 12K, which is usually what he does in my build on his A1, to all enemies throughout the duration of the battle again i was just surprised and impressed with coronar in terms of how much damage he was able to put out overall now it's the truth guys ninja that damage look at the damage dude. the sheer girth of the ninja legend man i'm slay yes that's right another ninja mentioned by yours truly uh ninja dude i mean this it's really his hail burn right Wow, he has the CC and the freeze, but this hail burn ability, right? Basically, let's just fast forward down to here. Three times at random, HP burn, awesome, cool, great. Uh, Predict Veil, great. Uh, but when used against bosses, will instantly activate any HP burn debuffs, including HP burn debuffs placed by this skill. On his Scion Slash, he has, uh, when attacking bosses, he will have ignore 50% of the defense. And on his passive, you're gonna be able to, against you know clan boss or against boss fights in general, every time he uses the same abilities, or uh, every one of his abilities, excuse me, you're going to get his attack by 20%, his crit damage up 25% uh, in addition to his base stats just by, you know, these longer battles against bosses. This dude is a boss killer, also has decreased defense on his A1. Very special champion. I feel incredibly bad to anybody downloading this game or for anybody downloading this game after October, whatever it is, 15th or something, uh, when he's no longer available because he's a really special champion and everybody gets him and he deals a ton of damage, especially against bosses. I was very impressed. I, I knew Ninja was gonna be good when I saw his kit, but I was really impressed with that A2 in action in the synergy between his passive. I actually, just kind of looking through these champions, there's actually a few others that I can mention in this video, so maybe I'll make an additional follow-up video, a few of my faves here, but I have to give the last spot to Sissia Flame Tongue. Again, it's kind of like the instantly activate any HP, HP burn debuff, similar to Ninja, uh, is really, really effective for dealing a lot of damage, again, especially against bosses. But she is much different than Ninja as well, right? She's putting an HP burn on herself, kind of whatever, uh, then has a chance of placing an HP burn debuff on all enemies for three turns, and then she grants an extra turn if HP burn is placed on all enemies. So you can lead in with Sissia, which is, you know, what she'll default do with her AI anyway, without adding any customization. You can lead, the, lead in the battle with the A3, and then you automatically get an extra turn and you come in with a hard hitting or I should say decently hard hitting A2. It's not like it's a, you know, Magnar hard hitting nuke, but it's hard enough to where you're doing an A, you're going in with the HP burn, right? And then you're going in again with the HP burn activation on this very next ability, right? With the weaken as well, uh, with the decreased defense on enemies under HP burn, which she just placed. So really cool kit on Sissia. And then she has to attack an enemy three times on the A1, a chance of increasing the duration of HP burn. She is a burner. She's a very cool synergistic HP burn champion. They're adding a lot of kind of champions like this, like Geomancer, like Ninja, like Sissia Flame Tongue, and a bunch of others. I love what they're doing here. And you can get Giant Slayer Mastery on her for your tier six option and masteries and deal even more damage proccing on a three time hitter on her A1. So Sissia Flame Tongue for me, she is a top tier kind of nuker quasi HP burn synergy champion out there. But all 10 of these champions, Basilisk, Tuak the Wanderer, Geomancer, Siege Hulk, Magnar, Ashwalker, Vizix, Coronar, Ninja, and Sissia Flame Tongue are 10 champions who truly impress me in terms of their overall damage output. But who did I leave off the list? And let me know if you want to see a video talking about champions I was underwhelmed with as well. Maybe a cautionary tale. Guys, thank you for watching all the way till the end. I appreciate you guys. And as always, take care, guys.